name of our God for the work he does in our lives all that he does in our lives and he And he bless me. And he Jesus, we are here before thee for your hand to touch us, for your hand to bless us, for your hand to keep us, for your hand to lift us up, for your hand to transform us, for your hand to regenerate us. We're coming before thee and we're asking that you will do and you will do greatly. We thank you for the opportunity that you give unto us to come and worship you and to have the desire to let you be the king of our lives and to have the desire to let you be the only God in our lives. In all that we do, we say thank you and we say, take control and have your way. We bless your name greatly forevermore, forevermore, forevermore. Daddy, Daddy. Bless my sister, 
bless my enemy bless us bless my brother bless my sister God bless your church Gloria de you do you are awesome in all that you do Lord Jesus awesome 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 daddy you are awesome Somebody say, awesome, daddy, you are awesome. Somebody help me, awesome. Somebody say, awesome. Somebody say, awesome, daddy, you are awesome. In my life, awesome. In my family, awesome. In my church, awesome. Daddy, you are awesome. In my finances, awesome. In my health, God, awesome. Daddy, 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 daddy. Awesome. Daddy, you are awesome. Oh God, song, oh Lord, song. Keep singing with me, heart song. Daddy, you are song. Lift up your hands, say, heart song. Just wave at him, heart song. Wave at the Lord, heart song. Acknowledge His presence among us. Awesome. Acknowledge Him in our midst. Awesome. Hey, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Daddy, you are awesome. Jesus, you are awesome. Hey, hey, hey. Awesome. Oh, oh, oh. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, here I am. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, here I am. Somebody say Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, 
Here I am, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, Here I am, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Also, the Lord said, Who shall I send? He is seeking for one available that he will use to speak. He will use to decree and to declare. The mighty deeds of his work. It says in the book of Ezekiel, Son of man, professor. Hallelujah. Amen. When you read the word of the Lord, you can hear sometimes and see, as the word of God said, that. The word of the Lord came unto me. Hallelujah. The word, somebody said, the word of the Lord came unto me. And he said unto me, prophesy. Listen, the Lord does not need you to be a prophet to prophesy. Hallelujah. When it says the word of the Lord came unto me, if there is nothing that you know about the word of God, hallelujah, you know his name is Jesus Christ. You do not need to imagine and invent. You just need to say the word of the Lord. Because you see, you were not born when the word of the Lord was written. Hallelujah. And that word went unto you. Are you following what I'm saying? It's not a something abstract, out of the ordinary. It's that word that came unto me. And when I have accepted that word and spoke that word and I saw that word make a way for me. You see, in those days, they may not have had the opportunity like we do. They did not have all the books of the word of God gathered together into one piece. When they wanted to give unto Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the parchment of the book of Isaiah. What happened? That word went unto him. He opened the scroll. And what did he say? Hallelujah. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. Was he reading or was he prophesying? Are you what I'm saying? But did he, when I say did he, I'm talking about the man. Did he write that word? No. Even though he is a word, I'm talking about his side as a man. Because he was tempted not as God, he was tempted as man. Are you what I'm saying? When he said the word of the Lord is upon me, the, 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 the spirit of the Lord is upon me, he's not talking as God. Are you, are you what I'm saying? He is showing us the pathway so that we can replicate what he did. Because he came to show us the example. So that uh, we also can say, Abba, Father, your spirit is upon me. And that word that he spoke at that time, that word was not yet written. Uh, I was saying that word was not written right there. Hallelujah. That word was written way back then. And he entered the synagogue. 
and they took the scroll of Isaiah and they put that in his hand. He opened the scroll of Isaiah and he starts saying himself through the word as a man. You got to understand that correctly. Once he starts saying that word, he starts speaking that word by prophecy and he says, today it is accomplished in your oh. I don't know if you're catching what the Lord is doing. The word was written. And Isaiah, to the spirit of God, was speaking things from the supernatural into the physical, and it was written. And that word was awaiting for somebody to put on that word. The word of God is awaiting you to put it on you. To clothe yourself with the word of God. So the word of the Lord came unto me. And he said, son of man, prophesy. And when I see the word of God, when I say I am talking, I as you. So that when you hear hi, you hear yourself and yourself and yourself. You follow what I'm saying? Because it's not I as me only. It's I as you, a child of God. The word of the Lord came unto me. Say it with conviction. The word of the Lord came unto me. This is what the word of God says. When the word of God came unto the void of the earth, what happened? Light. You feel what I'm saying? The word of God was with him. But when the word of God proceeded out and entered the void, of the creation, it became light. So if the word of God comes unto me, there is something inside of me that becomes light. Hallelujah. The word of God, it says, say only a word and my servant shall be made. That word travel. And went in the house where the servant was laying. And entered the bones and the nerves and the flesh of the servant. And that word brought healing. Say, Lord, your word came inside of me. Your word came inside of me. Let me tell you something. The Bible says that there was a man who was called Solomon. He went and sacrificed unto God a 1,000 bulls for the dedication of the temple. You know what that means? It means all the toil and the effort that you have done so you can keep the temple of the Lord pure. Because who is a temple? Let me read it again. When you can go to do certain things that are sinful, but you make the decision to refrain yourself from those things, what does it mean? You have sacrificed. You feel what I'm saying? Because is it present your body as a living? That is your reasonable service. When you fast, you have sacrificed. When you can pay something to please yourself and somebody else is in the need, and then you say, okay, you give to the person, you have sacrificed. So anytime you have sacrificed like Solomon, 
The Bible said the same night the word of the Lord came unto Solomon. And he said, I have seen your toiling. I have seen your efforts. Can Solomon by himself anoint and cause the temple to be holy? No. Impossible. But God says, I have seen the beginning of the work and the efforts that you have put in in order to please me. So the same night, hallelujah, before you go down, God will lift you up. Hallelujah. Because you. Night, night here will mean the grave. Before you are put in the grave, God will lift you up. People will know that you serve a living God. The reason why He's keeping you on earth. It's not just so that you worship him. It's also that he glorifies his name through your life. The Bible says, he said, I will do it for my name. That's why the word of God says, let your good deed be seen of men. So they can glorify your father. In what we do, we glorify God. In what we do, we can also shame the name of God. Amen. But when we choose to let the word of God to come unto us, like Jesus Christ, we can say today. Hallelujah. As he was reading the word, he did not. I, 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 love, I love the prophecy that says, by this time next year. Hallelujah. But oftentimes, it's not always by this time next year. Oftentimes, is now, immediately, today. You can read the word of God and it says, being the first day of the week, they were assembled to break bread together. And the Lord appeared among them. When was that? Today. <laughs> Are you catching it? Because whatever the word of God is speaking and addressing the blessing and the anointing and the increase and the change and the shift, you can appropriate it and say, the word of God came unto me. The word. Of God came unto me. When I say my life shall be clothed with its glory, it means the glory of God. And in the glory of God, there are two sides. There is a side that honor him being holy, that calls him to look at me and says, This is my Beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. That glorifies him. But on the other side of that glory is that he placed in your hand the riches so that he can entrust you to enlarge the territory of his kingdom. For the Bible says when Solomon built the house of God, the temple of God, it was a glorious temple. Hallelujah. So the word of the Lord came unto you. And that word said, prosper. You see, it's not even for you a choice. You see, there was a day and a time when I did not understand the reason of prosperity. I, I could not understand it. I remember those days in those uh, villages and in those uh, cities, they used to always tell you, Poor are, uh, no, um, blessed are the poor in heart, for they shall see God. So they were trying to make you sure that you never have the desire to even have a bicycle. But 
in many lives, it worked. Because in many lives, the person was even afraid to speak anything that has to do with riches. He will only content himself with the day-to-day -day food that God gives by saying, oh Lord, your manna. God did not promise you manna. He promised you the milk and the honey. So that caused you to be satisfied of the manna while that was not your promise. But because you did not understand where the promise was at and who spoke the promise, you satisfy yourself with the manna. Say, I refuse. I refuse. He said, I will bring you into a land flow wing. It's not just a land where there is no flow wing. You will have so much that your neighbor will be overflow. You feel what I'm saying? Because of who you are in that neighborhood, the neighbor will be blessed. The Bible says, Joseph was brought as a, what? Slave. Which riches he had? God. When he was entered into the house of Potiphar, what happened? The Bible says, all the things of Potiphar start increasing. And Potiphar even realized and identified that the grace of God was upon the life of Joseph. One, God does not look at your social status in order to cause you to be lifted up. But you see, when he causes you to be lifted up, he gives you a social status. Hallelujah. He does not look at your social status to lift you up, but when he lifts you up, he gives you a social status. Now Joseph was a First in, and uh, uh, the second in command. But in the soul of Joseph, he said even this blessing is called manna. Huh. He said, God, the day he gets you out of here, let my bones enter into the earth. Uh, Even though he had, he said this one, that's manna. Because you're supposed to be flowing. You take, you spend, and when you spend, 10 comes in. When you spend 10, 100 comes in. When you spend 100,000 comes in. When you spend 1,000, 100,000 comes in. You are tired, it just keep on coming. You sleep, it increases. You awaken, he increase. You sit down, he increase. For the Bible says you shall be blessed in your going. You shall be blessed in your coming. You shall be blessed in your staying. Hallelujah. Which portion of you that God will not take care of? None. Because he says, whether you go, I'm going to bless you. Whether you come, I'm going to bless you. Whether you stay, I'm going to bless you. Why? Because the word of the Lord came unto you. Look at yourself and think of this. How many people you have seen in your life? I'm talking about this life, the, in the now. Not your life when you were 10 years old, now. How many people you have seen the past few months, the past few years, the past few weeks, and you have had a burden to bless them because you know that they needed a blessing, that they needed some shift. And then you just say inside yourself, Lord. Hallelujah. But God does not want you to have a prayer. Hallelujah. Say, God does not want me to only have a prayer. He wants me to possess so I can flow. <laughs> Hallelujah. He did not come so you only pray. He came also so that you occupy until he comes. So he wants you to flow. You see, in the book of, I believe, 
first or second Corinthians, or in the epistle of Paul, he was talking to the church, and he told to the church that, I want you to gather all the offerings for the church of Jerusalem. Hallelujah. And he was even boasting about them on how they give like crazy. They were flowing. Are you what I'm saying? They were flowing. When, when you go to the river or to the lake or to the lagoon, how much of water can you pull, uh, come on, Can you fetch that we dry it? How much? When a place dry, it's because God has assigned it to dry. If God did not assign the place to dry, even if it is called a dead sea, that sea is still there. Hallelujah. So what the Lord was asked to do is not just to pray only. He also wants to flow. So I flow. I flow. As you flow by the Spirit of God, you are able to pull out. Because he says, out of you we come what? What is the living water? It always flow. Always flowing. So my spirit will not only be satisfied with the word of God in the sense of my salvation. No. He came to save all of me. Say somebody say, he came to save all of me. He came to save all of me. In you, there are many things. Hallelujah. There are many things. You are one, and yet you are called to be many. Are you following? You are one, but yet you are called to be many. As one, you become husband. As one, you become wife. As one, you become father. As one, you become mother. As one, you become friend. As one, you become somebody that is multiplied. You are one. And yet, you are called to be many. So, he came to satisfy all of you. Hallelujah. So that you be able to continually flow. The word of the Lord came unto me. What I'm seeking from God is not the riches of God. Let me explain that again. I'm not seeking the riches of God. Hallelujah. You know what it means? Huh. Uh, let me explain that again. I'm not seeking the riches of God. You know what that means? Mm -mm, I'm not possessing it. Mm -mm. Uh, 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 uh. No. David understood it. He said, blessing and... He says that. What? Blessing and... Uh -huh. Mercy. Sir. All. Of. Who is following who? You know what's good? Huh? All things good come from. Now, when he saw the earth and he made food, what did he call it? Good. He said very good. When he saw the earth and he made gold, what did he call it? When he saw the earth, he made the trees, what did he call it? So all of it is also part of his goodness. Are you know what I'm saying? So it says, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. So all it means is that I got to walk. I got to keep going. And it keeps on following me. But because it keeps on following me, I leave my trail as I go. 
Are you what I'm saying? I leave my trail. Some of my spot remains in places. That's why I keep on flowing. People are in the famine, but I keep on flowing. People are in increase of, uh, how they call it? Uh, how they call that thing? Inflation. And I told you last time, when they say inflation, I hear that my pocket is inflating. Are you what I'm saying? So whatever God said that I must do, I will do. However God says I will be, thus I shall be. However God says I will send you, thus he will send me. So now I'm not seeking the riches of God. The riches of God are seeking me. See, you are sitting in your home and somebody knocks or call and say, I want to bless you. All you did was sitting in your home. You went to work. You arrived. Your boss comes and say, ah, um, there have been uh, at least two years that you've been working here and we have missed to pay you some of your benefit. You, you, you did not even know you had benefit. So you didn't fight for it. Let me explain something. My wife and I, we had a benefit somewhere. And we say, ah, pff, pff, we don't want it. Because we don't want it. Because we have to go through too much paperwork so find, they can keep it. Literally. Last, last uh, what? Last, uh, no, no, last Sunday. We preach about it and then I say she will be receiving at 10 a.m. the next morning. Because the last other Sunday, <laughs> you, you, re you re remember that? So after we have, we have, we have even said keep it. They sent letter. Why knew you? Why you not? Why why don't you apply for the benefit? Uh, we say keep it. Why they sent letter? We said we are tired of this. It's too much paperwork. We don't. And they sent letter. They say okay, you've been denied because you haven't moved. We say ah, praise God, keep it. And then they sent letter. They say oh okay, you have been approved. <laughs> <laughs> And then they say, we increase your benefit. I say, ah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What did we do? Nothing. All we did is pray in God. There are realities of the supernatural provision of God in your life that is coming. Don't doubt it. Do not doubt it. God wants you to do less and to have more in the world, but he wants you to do more in him. Are you what I'm saying? So once you do 20% in the world, is enough. He's going to increase you at 80%. So that, that you can focus on him, so you keep on increasing, flowing. Say, I flow in the Lord. I flow in the Lord. Don't be dismayed. The devil is only trying to make you give up on what God has called honey and milk. Are you know what I'm saying? The, the, the devil is attempting to give up what God has promised you being the honey and the milk. So he calls you to believe that it is too difficult, that uh, you have to toil too much, that you have to push too much, that you have to keep on going, that you have to break on... Where you are supposed to press is in the Lord. Is in the Lord. Hallelujah. What God gives you in the world is that it shows you exactly where you have to push. Somebody say one button. One button. Listen. When God connects all the tools and the instruments and the line and the network together, one button activates all of them. You follow what I'm saying? One button activates all of them. So what you have to ask God is show, Lord, show me which button to activate the network. Show me that button so that once I press it, I activate the entire network because God has connected it already. 
If you don't understand what I'm saying, in computers, for instance, when you build a network, you have a computer that is called a client. So meaning when you go and you take your computer, we call it a client. And then you have another computer that is called a server. And that server is a computer, but the difference is it serves you file. When you go on your computer with a client, what you do, you click and you open what we call a browser. When you open the browser, it can be Chrome, it can be Safari, it can be Google, uh, and Brave, whatever. So you click, you open the browser. And then in that browser, you type something. And when you click, every, every information just download. Are you know what I'm saying? All this were already connected. They were already in the network. You did not tell you to have the information. You just click. And when you click at the right place, you download the information. Remember, whatever that is on the earth comes from the spirit. Are you what I'm saying? Moses was sitting. And then there was a button that was click. And he started having download of the word of God. And he started writing about Genesis. Moses was not in Genesis. Hallelujah. When Genesis was starting, he was not there. Amen. He was not sitting there. But the download that God has given him, including also the passing on of the word. But the word of God says that it is the spirit of God that inspire to write the word of God. You are supposed to flow. To flow. Let, let, sometimes, some, let me explain this. Okay, this is a good example. How much is one dollar in French CFA? No, no, it's 600 something, right? Calculate for me quickly. Calculate for me quickly, 620 times 400. Calculate for me quickly. 620 times 400, how much it does? Yes, how much? $248,000. No, 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 no. French CFA. So, 248, you said? 1,000. Huh? So, let's say 250, right? Let me ask you a question. When you were in... Cameroon, your first work, not even your first work, all the work, all of them, from the first to the last, until you left Cameroon, how much were you having a month? The equivalent of... Uh, no, no, in French CFA, I want to know, in French CFA. 100,000... Okay, so it was less than the 250 we're talking about. We're talking about French CFA. I want to give you an example. How much you had a month? Yes, in Cameroon. 850. How much you had a month in Cameroon? Okay, you never had 100. Okay, and you? 55,000. You? Huh? 110,000. You? Less than 100. Okay. Now, put it this way. Those of you who... We're having less than 100,000 or less than 150,000. Put it this way. You are in Cameroon. Okay? And suddenly somebody calls you and sends you 250,000. What do you do? No, I, I, I want you to put you in a certain mindset so you understand exactly what it is. You are in Cameroon. You're working. But you are not getting more than a certain amount, 150 or 200,000, right? French CFA. And then somebody calls you and gives you 250,000. You have done nothing. He just calls you and says, hey, I want to bless you. What do you do? Will your heart rejoice? You know why? You, you know why you will rejoice? Because you recognize the value of it. When you thank God 
You thank God because you recognize his value in your life. You feel what I'm saying? Let me explain this. God can give you one sense, but it's not the value of the sense that is valuable. It's the God who gave to you who is valuable. You feel what I'm saying? So your thanksgiving will be high at the same level as the one to the one million. I don't know if you make sense. When you start recognizing the value of God in your life, that's why you don't take for light or for, how is that? For granted what God does in your life. Because once you start understanding that he moved you from one place to another, you start understanding that he's moving you. So if he started to take me from here and brought me over here, then I know my over there, I'm going there. You know what I'm saying? Because I recognize the value of that God in my life, how he operates. So my thanksgiving started now climbing on his faithfulness, not on the things he does. And when I started now understanding the faithfulness of God, suddenly, somebody says suddenly. It means you do not calculate for it. Suddenly comes when you did not calculate for it. But you were only getting yourself ready. But you do not know how much God will pour in. God says, wait for me, I'm coming. And then in your imagination is I'm going to call the neighbors, the sisters, the family to come. But what God is trying to do is to call the president and the kings. You know what I'm saying? Because your limitation only makes you see how limited you can see. Are you know what I'm saying? But God, God's arrived in your life. He comes with the king and the queens and the president. That's why the king, he turns the heart of the king and he calls that to be a favor for you. The word of the Lord came unto me and all I had to do was to speak what he speaketh my wife said there was another type of benefit also we said oh, I, this one this one also we don't want to file it <laughs> we don't want it <laughs> And then she spoke to me and she said, ah, but do we, I, I said, we don't. But if we don't do this, here might be, but okay. We, so we were not at peace. And they told us, no, you must, re, they say you are required to file it. I said, mm -mm, I don't want to file it. I don't need it. I don't want it. But I was, and after I said, okay, let's, let's start and see how it goes. So that we will have on our side. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So my wife was not at peace. I was not at peace. So we agree that if peace is not there, God can cancel it. So whatever that they need to give you or me and they put on a condition on it, God will take care of it. When they finish, finish, Telling us you must do it. We call them. They say, ah, you are not eligible for it. I say, praise God. <laughs> Meanwhile, the increase is increasing over here. There are sometimes some money you don't want. It's not all money you take at every time. Let me explain again. There are some of them that will reduce your increase. Like, like weak. <laughs> no, I, I'm true. She understand what I'm saying. You have children. And then they tell you, we're going to give you weak. And you're thinking, they give you something, but they say weak, it will weaken you. They just put it in code. <laughs> you weaken your pocket. 
it weaken your brain, it weaken your increase. Because this is what they say. They say if you want us to give to you, you must be poor. <laughs> Do you get it? And then they, they, they inject that venom in you. And then without knowing, you are a desire of being poor. Am I, am I lying? Because you're thinking, if I move, I won't have it. So you're making every effort not to move. So now they call you and they say, okay, uh, we want to put you as a manager. You say, ah, 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 ah. Can you push me as the employee of the of the floor? <laughs> because if I remain there, the week we come in. <laughs> so they calculate and then they say, if you win every month 1,556. But meanwhile, they give you 1,558. So you make everything possible to remove the $2 out of it. <laughs> so, so <laughs> it's not every blessing that is a blessing. It's not everything that comes that increases you. That's what I'm saying. Once you start identifying what God has called you for, where he wanted to honor you, to bless you, to increase you, when it comes... Not only you will have peace, but you will have certainty of his faithfulness because you know he's taking you through. Let me explain. Even if they give you weak, but this is not a week to weaken you. It's a week to just carry you. Your desire will not be on that. You know what I'm saying? Your desire will be, I must get out of here. You, you, you get the difference? I must get out of here. So because the train of your desire is pulling you towards the increase of the, of the future, suddenly you are not eligible. But when you are not eligible, it means you are ineligible for another increase. Does it make sense? Because certain things, if you are eligible for, you will not be eligible for many. The word of the Lord came unto me. So we be blessed. So we be increased. And I say, I do not want to pray only to bless somebody. I need to flow so I can bless. Even if I understand that I I cannot bless everyone. Regardless, I will see bless those that the Lord will put on my path. Because I flow. I flow. I pray the same word of God. That speak light in a full, complete void. That cause matter to be in the void. Look at the earth and look around the earth. How many pillars does it have? Imagine. You have a void and then you have such things big like a earth and you look under and you see no pillar. If you want to know how it is, come, I will hold you and then remove my hand. And you will see what it is without pillar. <laughs> you will feel, hallelujah. So God made something. And he held it by his word. Hallelujah. He made the earth and he held it by his word. That's how God wants to hold you. So that uh, your holding will not depend on your surrounding. Your holding will depend upon his word. Once he has spoken on your life, he has spoken in your life. The days and the years and the millennium pass by, but you still held. 
People scream and they say, and how they call it? Climat uh, uh, uh-uh. Climate change. Sound change. Global warming. Global colding. They call all kinds. When they finish, the earth is still holding. You feel what I'm saying? Because they were not the one who made it. So what it means is that the same way God spoke the earth is... is, is The same way God spoke the earth, and no one can even have anything to do in that earth except God has allowed. The same way God made you. So who can displace you if God has not said so? Who, who can decrease you if God did not say so? This is the promise of God. That you and your children, children to the thousand generation. For as you obey God and as you follow him, he does not want you to give you just a promise or something. No. He's going to look all down to your children, children, children to the thousand generation. Between Jesus Christ and me, there is 2,000 years, right? Amen? Between Jesus Christ and you, there is 2,000 years, right? Each 1,000 years has passed. Somebody did something relevant to give to God the glory properly. That blessing has continued to flow. So that even the curses that were held against me were now broken off my life. So that the blessings that are held for you are now flowing. So that Christ can be lifted up continually. You see, you are not serving a broken or a broke God. Hallelujah. Do not be afraid to tell him, Lord Jesus, I thank you for providing unto me more than enough. For the Bible says that give what? Give out? Bow? For he is the one who gives the seed to the... So when Christ blesses you, he blesses you so that you can be bountiful. Hallelujah. The little, little, cheap, cheap blessing, that's, that's, from, that's from China. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I want Christ to step in my life in a way where I keep on flowing. If you want to flow, don't hold. Let me tell you something. The devil cannot uh, instigate you to give. <laughs> the day you hear God tell you give, and then you say, devil, get out of me. The devil cannot, in, 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 like, he cannot encourage you to give. <laughs> because he's a stealer. Uh, I say stealer. Uh, you know my word, we go in the dictionary. Amen. He's a stealer. <laughs> he's a thief. He comes to take. But when Christ is increasing you, he's increasing also your capacity, not only to give, but to receive. If you are receiving, I don't know, $100,000 a year, God wants you to receive $3,000, $5,000, I mean $300,000, 500000 if, if you were paid $20 an hour, brother, sister, you, you need to move because you got to be paid $150 an hour. Yes. Are you what I'm saying? Your minimum parity has to get into $150 a hour. When you have finished working, 
three days, you made a week. You, you follow what I'm saying? And then, what is put in your hand, you invest. And part of the investment increase. And in that increase, you eat. And from what you eat, you are, oh, Jesus. Ah, God, help me. Amen. She said, I got a blessing with my name on it. I put in challenge your spirit. You say, Lord, you did not come to be poor so that I be broke. You came to be poor so I be rich. Those riches belongs to the Lord. And he gives me to be a steel word. So Lord, as you give me to be a steel word, I will not let down any of the thing you place in my hand. You shall eat from the increase of thy flock. The increase of thy seed. The increase of thy harvest. You know why you shall eat the increase and not the basic of it? Hallelujah. Because, eh? Amen. See, when God talks about tithe, for instance, he does not want you to give tithe. I'm talking about tithe, not offering. He does not want you to give tithe on what you have. No. He said, give tight on all your in. Somebody doesn't understand that. Let me explain. I have my salary, right? And I give tight of my salary. That's what I have. Now, if I receive, let's say I receive, I don't know, COVID money. Okay? This is what we call an increase. So what happened is that for me to keep on increasing, I take the seed of that increase and I replant into the investment of God. You know what I'm saying? And suddenly, when my salary is going down, my other side is increasing. So I never lack. If I don't only, I say I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I give. <laughs> Hallelujah. Only on one portion of my increase, if that increase go down, the other portion remain at the same float. And now I have to toil. Somebody say mystery of the kingdom. So I learned from the word of God came unto me. And he said, you shall give tight of all thy increase. No salary. Once I understood it, I start tapping into the increase and tapping into the increase. When somebody comes, the person gives me something, that's an increase. I take out of it and I put the seed down. And suddenly, everything around me starts increasing. When I go here, I open this bank, increase. I, I, I go ahead and increase. I go over here, investment increase. Finally, I say, Lord, Lord, Lord. What? <laughs> because the key for God who has given unto you, that key is for you to continually increase so you can keep flowing. There is a brother. He said he's in an investment. And he has been investing a lot of money. And he went somewhere and he gave his tithe to that place. And he started having increased. But he thought that it was because it was good. No. Because the tithe, remember, is not what you actually give. It's what you what? Huh? You re remit. Hallelujah. Like uh, you sell something in the state and then you have to remit the taxes. 
Are you feel what I'm saying? So it's not something that you give necessarily, but it is something different that you remit. Amen? So remit. So he remitted his tithe of his increase in his investment. And when he started having the increase, he cut off the seed of his increase. Nobody called him. And that brother, a white brother, a year after, all the increase he had because of the initial seed has went. And he was affected by what they call inflation. But it was not so. I'm telling you one thing of the kingdom. In the kingdom of God, he says he made winter and summer and uh, uh, spring and fall. And I told you one time that there are two types of Christian. There is one that received a seed and pray with the seed. In spring, he pray. Amen? In summer, he pray with the seed. In fall, he pray with the seed. In winter, he remember that he had to plant the seed. That he planted that in winter. And then in spring, he realized and then wonder why he has no harvest. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then you have another type of Christian. He has a seed. In spring, he plant the seed while praying. Hallelujah. In summer, he also continued to plant the seed while praying. In fall, he continued to plant the seed while praying. When winter comes and everything is cold around, he sit down and he eat <laughs> while you're praying. Hallelujah. And then on the spring that comes for the next, everything starts springing again while you're praying. Flow. Flow. I do not want to be afraid of flowing. I do not want to be afraid of having. I don't want to be afraid of possessing from the riches of God. So when they come and they say, if you want to be qualified to have weak, you got to be poor. Remember that the enemy, he has devices. Remember, the enemy has devices. When they come and they want you to compromise what you know being the truth of God in your life, remember that same day is the same day you will start having chaff in your field. But when Christ starts now taking you out, increasing you, I pray thee, remember that he is increasing you so you continually flow. That you continually flow. Do not stop what you do in the name of the Lord. Let me show you this. Somebody can observe you do something every time. And the person who's ob observing you, he has a plan to get you into a certain position. And then you have been doing it faithfully. Faithfully. And the day the person decides to elevate you, that day you mess up everything. Will you be elevated? You feel what I'm saying? That's why the Bible says, do not be tired of doing good. Because you don't know when is your visitation. Your visitation is not the accumulation of your good. Your visitation is to find you doing good that day. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's not the accumulation of all your good that brings visitation. No. Visitation comes and it finds you doing good that day. But because you have made the decision to be ready all the time, hallelujah, 
when visitation arrives, he finds you ready. And that day, he, he, um, irrelevant of all the good you've done, that day, increase comes. That's why when the wicked change that day, that day he is also blessed. But the Bible says, if the just does justice all the day of his life, and the day of his death, when? The day of his death. He does wicked. The Bible says he shall die. Am I right? But if the wicked does what? Wickedness all the day of his life. By the day of his death, he does righteousness. The Bible says he shall live. So God will not count the mountain of all your goodness. He said, when I come, will I find when? That day. So for me being ready, it's like the ten virgins. They were ready all their life. Amen? But five decided to just play around. <laughs> Amen? So they went out. When they came in that day, it is that day they decided to go out. They could have went out to look for the, I would call it, for the oil the day prior. You know what I'm saying? But they decided that day, not knowing that that day was the day of visitation. Are you know what I'm saying? They did not know. But yet, virgin is means that they kept themselves from the world, from being spotted from the world. So they preserved themselves. And they did have oil and fire. Hallelujah. But the problem is that they did not keep on increasing on it and they start going down. And instead of paying attention to, uh, to redress the thing that was going down, they, kept, they left it and it kept on going down. And then they realized, ah, I don't have the fire as I used to. And they decide that day to get out of the place of virginity. When they come back, the Bible says what? The door was closed. So your visitation is the day it arrives to find you that day. When the angel of death was coming to visit Egypt, the Bible said that even some Egyptian became Israelite. Hallelujah. Because they understood that from all that has happened, that day was different. So they themselves, they said, give me blood too. <laughs> I'm going <laughs> to put it also on my door. Hallelujah. Because the day of visitation was not happened if you are in the covenant or not. Hallelujah. The day of visitation is whether you have the covenant on your door. Amen? So whether you were a child of the covenant or not child of the covenant, if you do not have the covenant on your door that day, that day you will be out. So say, Lord, the day of my visitation arrives when I am always ready. Be ready. It's not get ready. It's be ready. That's why I, you know, sometimes there are things that happen in our lives. You know, each one of us, where, uh, you know, the day of the Lord, which is uh, the day we dedicated to the Lord, which is the Sunday, the first day, hallelujah, it happens that Sometimes things in our lives will be against our uh, control where you won't be able to be in the assembly of the saints. But I don't know if you understand, but sometimes if you ever realize that that day you will not be able to be in the assembly of the saints, you are not at peace. Uh, am I right? You are not at peace. You, you, your soul, your mind, your toes, your fingers, everything inside is a boiling. You are not at peace. But if you are not to be in the garden of the sand and you are at peace, hey, Jesus. <laughs> you need deliverance. <laughs> because that's a big, big, big problem. So what I'm trying to say is that we remain always ready because we never know when is the day of visitation. And the day of visitation comes with blessings, comes with flowing, comes with increase. So all I have to do is to do what the Lord Jesus says, to be faithful in the little things. 
Shall we pray? We bless your name, Lord Jesus. We thank you for the word that you have spoken to us. For your word that came to us today. You have called us to increase us. To promote your name in our lives. And to lift up your countenance upon us. I pray for each soul. Each person. Whether a child. Whether a youth. Whether an adult. Whether an elder. For each person that has the breath of life. From the womb to the eldest. I pray that your word today that came unto us will penetrate our lives, shift, change, and cause us, Lord God, to be ready at all time. I thank you for the promises that you have given in a place that is flowing with milk and honey. I thank you to give us a desire to keep our lives spotless. Spotless from sins. Spotless from the lust of this world. Spotless from deceit. I thank you, Lord God, that you keep our heart in you so that we seek after righteousness. Your righteousness. I will seek after your king. I thank you that you teach us to increase in every area of our lives. Bless your name for what you do in our lives now. Bless your name for what you have done in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen.